हेलो फ्रेंड्स नमस्कार वेलकम टू येट अनदर एडिशन ऑफ फेलोशिप वार्ता टुडे वी डू नॉट हैव ए गेस्ट बट आई थॉट आई कुड डिस्कस विद यू ऑन हाउ टू प्रिपेयर योर एप्लीकेशन फॉर नेशनल पोस्ट डॉक्टरल फेलोशिप्स सो आइडिया इज वेरी सिंपल एज यू ऑल नो दैट अनुसंधान नेशनल रिसर्च फाउंडेशन दे हैव इन्वाइटेड एप्लीकेशन फॉर नेशनल पोस्ट डॉक्टरल फेलोशिप सो क्वेश्चन इज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वॉट इज नेशनल पोस्ट डॉक्टरल फेलोशिप ऑब्वियसली एज द नेम सजेस्ट दैट इट इज एन अपॉर्चुनिटी फॉर डूइंग पोस्ट डॉक्टरल रिसर्च विद इन इंडिया दिस इज वॉट एन पी डी एफ मीन्स फॉर and uh, it allows you to grow as independent researchers you know you remember your phd days you were being guided by your phd supervisor or the mentor or your teacher at every step here the idea is if you could get develop if you could grow as a independent researchers of course it gives you the freedom to join institute of your choice and uh, there is no restriction uh, and you could go to any place uh, any institution which you prefer and uh, it comes with some financial guarantee so that you are not looking for money here and there sometimes people feel it as a job it's not a job it's a fellowship and it is a tenured fellowship so you will get it for a 3 year period which could be extended but then for 3 year you are assured of the finishes now question is do you need to go for pdf or you feel that this is not my cup of tea uh you should not go for a pdf if you are looking for an immediate job or if you want to start up or join a business maybe even a family business so if you are looking for any of those things then this pdf is not for you why you should go for pdf is if you want to develop yourself in a specific domain then it is for you. if you enjoy exploring unfathomed depth of knowledge discovering thing how things works out and at the same time you would like affiliation to an institution if you would like some kind of support to your family then you should go for pdf you could also go for pdf if you love addressing challenges and developing their solutions through new technologies and new th those things so these are good reasons for going for post doctoral fellowships so in post uh, in your phd you have learned how to do research and now this is the time when you should go and do research now what you have learned during phd that is very important one is as you know that phd is different from other university degrees in other degrees there is a prescribed syllabus and there there is a examination from within that syllabus and you are answering but in phd you had a independent question and once you have an independent questions your success of your phd is how good your question was and what you also learn through your supervisor through your mentor through your teacher that what are the good research practices how to do the background study how to do literature survey how to find gap areas you learn taste of reading you conduct a lot of experiments all these things help you in growing further then with the help of your teacher with the help of your mentor you convert your objective your research questions into several small milestones so that you know if i have done this thing then next i have to the so you plan first divide uh, convert your goals into several milestones then you plan each step and also the sequence of the step which step you would be taking first what you will be taking next and those kind of things and then very important part of the phd is to tell the world what you have done 
So you are making reports, you are making presentations, and these help you uh, gaining more confidence on the subject you have undertaken during your PhD. And of course, it is expected all research scholars to publish research papers or go for patenting any kind of IP protection. So you need to constantly work on those things. You need to publish those things. So all these things, what you have learned from PhD, they are your core skills, which you would be required to have it into PDF assignment. Now put yourself into the new shoes that what is PDF and accordingly, now you have to form a new research questions. You have to do all those things that you do in, did in PhD. You need to convert your goal into a small objective, make uh, reports, publish papers, go for IP protection, all those things you need to carry out. And then of course, PhD also gives you satisfaction of achieving something. Now, this is something very core. Uh, because until you are satisfied with your own PhD and you are uh, in a position to tell the world what new you have done, then you will not be very successful. Now, what is the difference between PDF and PhD? One is you need to learn to go beyond PhD. Now, PhD, as I said earlier, is a structured program of the university where you are expected to earn a degree and you need to abide by certain university regulations and those kind of things. And uh, now the time has come when we, you need to work freely for the research. There is no pressure for the degree, but you would be working on your research goals. Are you really independent? That's a big question. Because even for postdoctoral fellowship, you need to have a mentor. Now, mentor gives you two, three things. One is you have access to the left facility mentor has given. Second, you get a lot of guidance from the mentor. So you are independent in a way that you have formed your own questions. You are independent in the way that you could go for any research approach, but your mentor would provide you access to several equipment, access to the laboratories, and also uh, give you time to time counseling, guidance, how to go beyond. So you are setting your own research goals. That is very important. And uh, you have to create a niche for yourself. Remember one thing, as a PDF, until you have created a niche in a particular subject domain, your further rise would be critical. And if you have developed a niche in a particular domain, then you can rise much faster. So you need to be very clear what you have to do. The most important thing is how to choose a research topic. First of all, we must realize that PDF is not extension of your PhD. So several times people make a mistake that whatever work they have done in PhD, they would like to carry it further. No. PhD was a program to help you, to guide you, how to form questions, how to work on that questions, how to reach a satisfactory response, how to find out a new solutions. But that is all done for theme one. Now it is a time when you should look for question number two, which uses same kind, roughly same kind of resources like your experiment skills, your learnings, your technical knowledge, but you should be applying it to a second type of. So what I would suggest to you that your topic should be a little different from what you have done in PhD. And it should show that you are capable of taking question number two. You need to read about 
current challenges to be addressed by the society. Now, you know, in all subject areas, we have got some challenges. And if your contribution as a PDF going to be helpful to the society, there is more likelihood to get support. Similarly, there are a lot of newer technologies making newer interventions and they are changing the way we are doing research. And uh, a lot of digital technologies are there, a lot of AI tools are there, a lot of uh, uh, new intervention, new thought processes are coming. So, for example, if you are an agriculture scientist, you need to worry what is sensor technology to do with agriculture? What is artificial intelligence to do? How quantum approaches would be there? So you need to understand how new are technology making inroads in your domain. So you need to develop research questions targeting a challenge, available resources. This is very important. You must know where are you placed and how you are going to do it. Because until uh, if you do not have resources, you cannot answer some of the questions. Even if you have the question, you cannot answer. So you should know what are the resources available and how we are going to do it. Remember one thing. In each application, referees are going to look for scientific novelty. So you must be very clear why are you doing it? Why it is required to be done? What is the new thing being targeted? And also your specific contribution to the goal. So if you are very clear that this is what my value addition, then referees are likely to take it forward. Now, choosing an institute or a mentor is a very, very difficult task. And uh, you need to plan it in a way how it is going to help. Now, you know, when we are going for a mentor, it gives, it helps us in a different ways, like it coaches us, it provides support, psychological support, research support, and uh, help us in growing, achieving our goals. It also uh, leads to direction, uh, success. So we need to take a call if what is going to be my choice, either I identify a mentor. So the moment you identify a mentor, you understand his or her research uh, area. You understand what kind of work he or she is interested in. And accordingly, you can orient yourself to that. On the other hand, if you need to see that if I'm going for institute first, then I need to know where I'm going. So if you would like to go to a premium institutions, say IIT, MIT, Indian Institute of Science, any central universities, any good place, if I could say, in top NIRF 200 institutions, then you are likely to get more exposure to the equipments. And that is a big plus. But if you are going to, uh, say, closer to your hometown, looking for employment immediately after um, completion of uh, your PhD, then you could even opt for less indoor institution because there you will not find many stars who are doing quality research. So if you are doing from a lesser indoor institution, you are shining over there. So make your choice very clear where you are going to do. And then, of course, you need to plan how you are going to do because this is a very, very critical test. You must qualify as an independent researcher. This is going to be your first grant after your PhD. So it is important that you prove yourself. So you need to plan your objectives, put it on a timeline, something what we call part chart. So you have to have very clear and keep some buffer. Don't put it so tight. If there are regions beyond your control which could affect delivery of your goals, so always keep some adequate buffer. Host institution may ask you to take academic responsibilities. Don't shy off. Because the moment you take uh, undergraduate classes, master classes, good part is that you go back to your fundamentals. You go back to the principles of the subject and they give you more clarity. 
they give you more authority on the subject and you understand it much better. Do networking. You know, in PhD time, you were engaged in your own lab and things were like that. But now the time has come. You should know who are the other researchers around the world who are working in this area and how they could help you in your research goals. Go for uh, social media, uh, not Facebook or LinkedIn. I'm talking about research social media. Go for Google Scholar, go for ResearchGate, go for Scopus. There are so many of them. So the moment you go there you will and you register your research interests, you will find several people around the world who are working in this. So these platforms will keep you pouring information about various researchers. They are helpful. Also, if you're going for a conference, try to meet people who are uh, working in your area of interest. Try to see how you can augment each other's work. Because the moment you can augment, then there are better possibilities of going uh, forward. And of course, as a researcher, you need to keep publishing. You need to keep IP in your... My only suggestion is, please do publish in index journal. In journal index, in uh, Web of Science, Scopus, SCI index, uh, so that your research is valued. If you are publishing only in conferences, if you are publishing in non-index journals, then your research will not take you forward. So please publish in uh, good journals. It may take time because refereeing and other things, it causes, it takes time. So you need to plan, but publish some good papers, if possible in Q1, Q2 journals. Now, uh, we need to see if NPDF by ANRF is the only option. No. There are several options for postdoctoral fellowship within India and outside India. In fact, there are several government agencies which are inviting proposals for uh, postdoctoral fellowships, either as postdoctoral fellow or as research associate. So we need to understand what are those uh, programs, how we can participate. And uh, I can tell you a little more about uh, postdoctoral fellowship by these agencies when in a separate presentation specifically targeting each one of them uh, but right now since call for NPDF is open what I'm trying to say let us right now focus on NPDF but word is not limited to NPDF there are a lot of opportunities friends I shall come with second part of uh, this presentation where I would discuss in detail about various schemes which are in operation, um, uh, how you are going to fill up this form and going for other things. So uh, friends, thank you very much for this interaction. I hope you find this uh, presentation useful. Thank you. Namaskar.